Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jaylee. This is Jaylee's Corner. This is my review for Growing Up Hip Hop, episode 22 from season 5. But y'all already know, first things first, if you have not done so already, please come over to subscribe to my channel and book on my whole J-Bird, J-Bird, dun, 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 and all that goodness and stuff. Um, you have to inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Okay, you have to relax, relate, and release. Okay, and center yourself. You know, because, you know, the world, man. The world. So I hope, you know, I can be a common voice to you all. Okay, do not forget to like, to comment, to share this video, to follow me on IG and on Twitter at J underscore leads underscore corner. Um, anyway, let's just talk to you. This episode to me wasn't all that much. It wasn't all that much. It wasn't all that much. Let's just start to you. We see Angela and she had a building, okay? And she's working out, okay? Little boxing trainer, whatever. And she's working out, working out, working out. And she's like, you know what I'm saying? I'm having this event. I want, you know, everybody to come to. So she's in our invitation. So everybody except Egypt and Sam. I feel like we're seeing Egypt and Sam being dog walk out of the series. And Egypt said she quit the show too. So if Egypt left, Pep should be gone. And if Pep leave, does TT leave? I don't think TT has to leave because TT now has her own little stuff going on. She's cool with, with with the rest of the cast. So I mean, she can be there without. But I feel like if Egypt was gone, Pep needs to be gone as well. But we see Bow Wow come and style by. You know what I'm saying? Because as we see, you know that's her new love interest. That's her new her new partner in crime, or whatever. He's the new Romeo. And, you know, he come back for a few minutes to chit-chat or whatever. And it kind of work out. I mean, it was cute and fun. But Angela's voice is very irritating when she's yelling. And y'all know when Bile is around, Bile trying to touch on her and rub on her and, like, aggravate her. Like like, a, like dudes do. They just aggravate you to get on your nerve. But I'm like, Angela, if you want Bile to replace Romeo and you want to do these things with him, you have to do more than run around. Stop! 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 Girl, my ears burning. Okay, don't do that. Like, just say you stop. Like, use a regular stop voice. Why are you running around? He not, he not really trying to get you. Like, calm down. Okay, anyway, and that's all that was. I don't, honey, I don't care about that. We do see Vanessa go by and she see Rev run. I love when we see Rev run on episodes. See what I'm saying? We all love us a good Rev run uh, sighting around these parts. And so, you know, she would have said that or whatever. He's cooking some good old little salad. Just a moment. I wasn't even talking to Siri. Vanessa. <laughs> We went by to see her daddy. And you know what I'm saying? He was cooking some food or whatnot. She's like, what's that? And so, oh, it was this and that or whatever. And some little rant or whatever. Oh, my God, ranch. And she was like, <laughs> I'm like, first of all, if you want some, get some. He like, you, if you want some, it's just get some. It's okay. You know, I'm on this diet. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to lose some weight. You know what I'm saying? Don't, I need to lose weight. Like, do I look the same? Like, don't, don't you see how big I've gotten since the last time you've seen me? How much weight I've gained? I say, I mean, has he not seen you in years? When? I mean, have y'all been estranged from each other? Like, why are you acting as it? It's a weird. People who gain like five pounds, I get. To them, it's like 30. So I get to her, she feel like she's gained so much weight. I feel like, yes, Vanessa has gained weight since she was skinny-er. Okay, skinny-er. However, she's still not fat. She's, she's, she's just, she's not even, she's thick in the best of ways. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even think she's thicker than she's thicker than she's getting bigger. I think now the weight that she's put on, she's just not as skinny. Like, it's the weirdest thing that the weight looks good on her, but she don't like it. You know what I'm saying? We get to that she doesn't like it, but she's talking as if I've gained all this weight in like two weeks. I'm like, you gained weight over like four or five years since you had your daughter. So my thing is, you got old. You're not 20 anymore. Okay, you, you you birthed a whole human being. Your body just changes. 
He said, I feel like, you know, no matter what you look like, that should not define you. And Vanessa's at a point where she's making it seem as if if she is in a certain way, she isn't who she is. And if all that you are is a girl who's a size two or a size four, then that says more about you than anybody else. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? She brings about, you know, it's a, it's a double standard. You know what I'm saying? Men can say that, you know, weight isn't an issue, but women cannot. And that is very much so actual and factual. But I feel like you have the means, the time, the opportunity. You have the resources to lose the weight. You have the resources to get you a whole training person, a whole chef. You can get the meal. Look, you, you have the uh, the advantage here. There's no reason that you can't lose 20 pounds. Like, and that's the hard part that I feel like, you know what I'm saying, you don't, you don't want to say because you don't want to be judgmental. But I feel like Vanessa's making it seem as if she's gained 100 pounds and she has no idea how to lose 100 pounds. Bitch, you gained 20 pounds after having a whole kid and now you're in your 30s and you're tripping. Like, come on now, we, we, gotta, we, we have to call a spade a spade. And I'm not trying to um, negate her feelings. I get she feels how she feels. But... Every episode we see her talking about, I just, I'm not comfortable. I don't like how I look. I'm so self-conscious I've gained this weight. But we haven't seen her take any any steps forward to fix it. You keep talking to Angela and to your daddy and to TT. Have you talked to Jenny Craig or whoever, you know what I'm saying? The people, the weight, have you, the weight watchers? Have you done that? And I feel like, you know, again, you have... You have the resources to do this. You have the resources to get the best of the best. You are a fucking Simmons who has a child with a fucking weigh Okay? You have ample uh, ways to do whatever it is you need to do. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I feel like Vanessa's full of shit. I'm not saying that she's not upset, that she don't feel truth like you feel, but she ain't doing nothing about it. If I had the resources of Vanessa, I would be smaller. Because, again, I can't afford I can't afford to hire a private chef. I wish I could, but I can't. I'm saying you, I can't afford to hire a, a, a personal trainer. I wish I could, but I can't. You know what I'm saying? My thing is you have every resource available to you. And you you think WeTV wouldn't pay for some cute-ass uh, uh, trainer to come train you? Okay, girl, bow. This girl, go ahead on. Then goes, you know, I hope this these these weight loss issues, this or this weight issue that I'm having, doesn't cause a rift between me and Angela. You need to focus more on what you want to make yourself better than how Angela feels about you want you not being happy with how you look. I'm just saying. Next up, okay, we see T.T. have a little chit-chat with her mom or whatever. It was real cute and short and sweet to the point or whatever. You know, bringing up how you know what I'm saying I don't want to keep bringing up marriage. You know what I'm saying about us? I do want to get married. You know what I'm saying? But I don't want to keep bringing it up and like bagging, you know, bash them over the head like I want to be married. But I do like having control. And her mama basically said, girl, chill the fuck out. You can't consistently control everything. You know, no man wants to be with a woman who wants to control his every move, including if he's proposing or not. Like, you know what I'm saying? And the thing, they haven't been together that long. I know you're pregnant. We know that. So it's not as if they've been a couple for five years and now she's pregnant. And she's like, well, damn, is we ever going to get married? Like, y'all have been together for like a year. And you're like six months pregnant. So, I mean, like, it may be more than, I'm not, you know. They may have been together a year and a half, and she's sick, you know what I'm saying, whatever. She's acting like a person who's been with somebody for a long time, and you're just anxious to see when they propose. When, when, when. Girl, calm the fuck down. She also brings up how she talked to Flepper. You know what I'm saying? Y'all talked to Flepper. You know what I'm saying? And Flepper told me that, you know what I'm saying, she never really believes that, you know what I'm saying, I was in love with Sam or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You know, it was the whole thing. She was going through things or whatever, and she was crying. She was sad. And her mom said the most sensible thing we all knew that was sam's doing it you know it's good that she that she admitted it or whatever but you know what i'm saying we have to support flepper you know for the time being until she can get her own voice flepper really is letting samantha be her voice and it's sad because again this is season five and this she came on this show as pep and treacher's daughter we had no idea who she was and now you know in within five seasons who is she we still don't know who she is and she still doesn't have anything of her own. Like, I mean, she has Sam, but I mean, who wants Sam? <laughs> Just Flepper. You know, and then CTT meet up with Lil' Kendu. And yes, Brianna's name is back. 
to being Lil' Kendall because Lil' Kendall was still, you know, not on my good side because she was too hype about um, Romeo talking to her. So we're going to see, you know, if she redeems herself next week in the season finale or she going to end the season as Lil' Kendall. You know, she's bring, I'm having a baby shower, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm inviting everybody except um, um, Samantha. Like, I'm inviting Flepper, but Flepper's aware that she, I don't want, you know, Samantha there because I'm, you know, I'm cool with, re with rebuilding our, you know, body mind but I don't want him in my space and I'm you know silent on that so okay, I don't want him around you know what I'm saying period and she also brings up how you know the baby wasn't planned you know it was, it was not a planned pregnancy and you know what I'm saying while I'm happy I'm also stressed and not fully happy and she was crying and getting get all emotional or whatever you know what I'm saying and she says because she had this fairy tale she had this fairy tale in her head about how her life would be and what's happening is not her fairy tale now my thing is if you crying solely because you're pregnant and you're not married you, you, I'm gonna call that pregnancy hormones you didn't see Ashley and Vanessa meet up or whatever the chit chat Vanessa, I don't care. Because again, Vanessa keeps having these conversations. I don't feel good about myself. You know, I've gained this weight. Lose it. Have you worked out? Got a trainer? Nutritionist? No, none of that. But what have you done? Well, I've told you about it. What well, bitch, that doesn't help you, okay? We can talk all day about stuff. If you don't know anything to fix it, it doesn't get fixed, okay? Um, And some people don't like how Angela handles Vanessa. I don't mind it because Vanessa's insecurities is not Angela's responsibility. Vanessa has a whole f uh, boyfriend who she's been with for, you for a long time. Why aren't you having these conversations with him? Not saying sisters cannot be supportive of each other, but you, she can't put her burden upon Angela and then when Angela doesn't give her what she needs she gets upset what is your man giving you just wondering because it's not as if Angela isn't being supportive but Angela is responding in a way that Angela will respond and Vanessa knows this about uh, I mean Vanessa yeah, Vanessa knows this about Angela it's like you don't go to a lion and say hey this bunny rabbit is pissing me off. And you get pissed when the lion eats the rabbit. It's a fucking lion. It's a fucking lion. Go to the grasshopper. Grasshopper, I do not like how this uh, uh, bunny is pissing me off. The grasshopper will probably go have a conversation with the rabbit. But it won't eat it. You can't get mad when you go to somebody who you know what they do. Now, you know, as it tells, like, you know, that's I think you would have looked, you would have you looked amazing at my photo shoot had you participated was well, no 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 because you invited me i did not know what i've been saying that would not have made me feel calm or whatever i have to build up my confidence and i feel like when she said that she, okay i know exactly how you feel you want to why i know because i felt that way for a long time they chronicled they, they showed angela's uh stuff when she was, you know what I'm saying, dealing with feeling like she was fat in the Rev Runs uh, season or whatever. So I'm like, we know that she struggled too. And I'm happy that she said to Vanessa, and one with the other, don't act like I don't know what you feel. Because as you know, I felt that same way because for years, I was the fat Simmons. And you and JoJo were so skinny. And I felt, you know what I'm saying, I felt fat. And like, you know what I'm saying, no one looked like me. And I had to deal with, you know, my insecurities. And she had to do all that. All of that. And that's when Vanessa was skinny, skinny, okay? And so, you like, she, like, I had to battle too. But I got to the point of understanding that, you know, I would never be enough for anyone. People who thought I was too skinny, People thought I was too fat. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't fix myself enough to make anyone happy. And once I understood, like, it's not about how others view me. It's about me because I can't live my life based on what they want. Okay? And I like how she said, it's a mental thing, Vanessa. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you have to first conquer. And that's the thing. Vanessa has a mental thing where she feels some kind of way. Because she's not, she, she, it doesn't seem like she's trying to lose weight. We haven't seen that. All we've seen her do is talk about how she wants to do it. Anyway, um, she brings, I went to a consultation to, um, don't damn water. I went to a, a lipo consultation and you know what I'm saying? It felt wrong to me. Not that people shouldn't have lipo. I don't mind anyone else getting, getting surgery or whatever, but I did not want to do it or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, you know, that's what, that was not the thing for me. And I like how, <laughs> 
And and it was like, you know, well, okay, well, what, well, how do you want to fix it? Like, what do you want to do to actively fix it? Well, you know, I used to not drink. You know, I used to not drink. Well, okay, you're going to stop drinking? And she never said she would stop drinking. I'm my like, girl. And so, so <laughs> I was like, you know what? You need, you know, to get some new clothes. Because you need to, you know, feel good in what you're wearing versus wearing your old clothes that makes you look bigger because your clothes are too tight. Okay, because she didn't gain a couple pounds, but she ain't bought no new clothes. And so, as I had the stylist come over, I think it was, I think it maybe Vanessa stylist, and he picked up a couple outfits or whatever that fit her fine, and she looked great in clothes that fit her body. And again, it's not like she's gained that much weight. Again, it's maybe twenty pounds, and that's just me guesstimating. It could be thirty. I don't know. I'm not judging her. What I'm saying is. She can fix it. She can't. Anybody can fix it. I'm not just saying her, but I feel like she has more means than regular folk. You know what I'm saying? So, girl, just just do something with yourself. Just, just do something. So, we then get this little event where Angela is having or whatever. And then we see the twist and JoJo has got into some kind of, you know, scuffle. Okay? And we see how they say, you know, you know, at Angela's event or whatever, while they were being mic'd up, you know, twist and JoJo got into a, a little physical altercation, but we don't really find out what happened. You know what I'm saying we do see one production person bringing up how we have not pulled up. I saw y'all like exchanging words. I kind of got into the, in the middle of y'all. And when I did that, you know, that's when Twist mushed JoJo in the face, which then made JoJo push Twist into the car. And, you know, I guess that was it. Whatever, it, was, it was broken up. But again, the cameras were not rolling yet, apparently, allegedly, because uh, they were just getting to the venue to have this event and whatnot. So at the end of the day, you know, Twist brings up how JoJo walked up and was trying to tell him, like, what he was about to do, what he should do, or something. And can't no man tell me, you know what I'm saying, what I don't like anybody telling me um, what to do. And I get that. I get that. But I feel like neither one of them could say what happened. Twist just saying, you know, what he was telling me what I should do. To me, didn't explain what happened. And then Jodo, like, I walked up or whatever, like I usually do. And he just, like, he was just mad. Like, he like he had an attitude or whatever, and I don't know what it was for him to put his hands on me. Like, I don't, I don't know what it was. So, Jodo pissed now. All hype. Right. Uh, 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 you know what I'm saying? And Twist, like, you know, I, you know, I, I, I do this for real. Thing. Jojo should go. I'm like, I thought it was stupid. Because neither one of them could say what happened. And in my opinion, I like both Jojo and y'all know I like Twist. I feel like it seemed like... Twist got mad about something, and JoJo did not know what. And versus Twist telling JoJo what was wrong, or even what JoJo did to offend him, he just got pissed and mushed him in the face, which pissed JoJo off because he like, what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck. And then you know he just keep complaining about, I don't know what happened. I walked up whatever he had attitude. You know what I'm saying? And it rah 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 rah. So it's one person twists like him saying, well, he shouldn't, you know, I need to be respected. And JoJo like, I don't know what happened. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what. And I'm like, I'm the fuck? And he outside, you know what I'm saying, fussing with his wife. You know, it's just, it's not fussing. He's frustrated. He's expressing his frustration because he's pissed. And we all know when JoJo gets pissed, he gets, you know what I'm saying, he gets, he gets the attitude or whatever. He has his temper. And, you know what I'm saying, it, it, it's what it is. And I just feel like, I feel like it's whack to me if Twist felt some kind of way. Because him JoJo is real, is real, real cool. And I feel like if, if Twist felt some kind of way, why couldn't you talk to JoJo? Like, at what point, what made him, you know, mush JoJo in the face? That's my question. I'm just wondering. And then, like, doing a little commercial thing, whatever. They say, you know, well, I'm surprised that you, you know, mush JoJo and, like, not Sam. He said, yeah, well, Sam wouldn't say nothing to me. Like, Sam wouldn't say shit off the wall. But Twist won't say what it is that JoJo. I'm like, girl, to me, I think Twist mushing JoJo in the face is whack. I do. Because it's JoJo. The fuck? It's fucking JoJo. The fuck? I don't care. It's, it's dumb. But I also wonder, I'm like, what did JoJo do? What did he do? Who knows? So we then see that happens or whatever so it was. It was. Then Jojo outside. We then see as a stalk. We don't see him. We see the we see a person whose face is, is covered up, um, who was supposedly as a stalker, and he's there. So and Angela isn't there yet. So Jojo calls and like, you know where you at? I'm on the way. 
what the stalker's here. Like, do you want to talk? Like, have you ever talked to him? Like, what if he, like, what if he just likes you? Or, you know, it's like, just a fan. He's like, she's like, nah, nah, nah. Like, he drove or he, he came from Detroit. I said, oh, shit. He came from Detroit? No, not Detroit. <sighs> he came from Detroit, you know, to, I think, in her house in New York. You know, as if he knew her and, like, came to her house. He likes it to me. She likes to me. No, he's crazy. I don't want to be near my... Before I get there, I, w I want him to be gone. Cool. Dude then walk up. Like, Jojo, can I talk to you real quick? Sure. What's up? So, he's like, why does my sister feel like, you know what I'm saying? Why does she feel stalked by you? Like, why does she feel, like, unsafe by you? Like, you know what I'm saying? She brought, you know, you go to her house. He said, you know what, look, man, I, you know, I just want to take on a date. You know what I'm saying? I like her. You know, I think she's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? I'm not dangerous. I think don't ever realize he's not a stalker stalker. He just crazy. He like it's just like a, a regular person who likes someone from afar. And he's like you can like it from afar. From afar. From over there. You know what I'm saying? But you need to leave, bro. And do leave. So he leaves or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's what it was. But then he comes back. He comes back and he's like sitting. I got he was sitting in a store. And this is how I know dude is crazy for a couple reasons. One, he's sitting there in the back, and he's sitting down low, so people can't, you can't really see him, so you might not notice that he's in there. But I'm like, first of all, he's wearing white socks, but he's in all black, okay? Anybody, in my opinion, who's wearing white socks in all black is crazy, because why don't you have on black socks? Because why is the whiteness of your knees and your ankles are, I'm confused. You know what I'm saying? Not your knees, just your ankles. But I'm like, okay, yeah, he can dudes in Detroit, they don't wear white socks or black shoes. They wear black socks or black shoes. If you see a dude from Detroit, he got on white socks or black shoes, he's crazy. Okay, that's just what it is or whatever. But, you know, Angela's assistant sees him sitting in the back. She's like, he, he didn't came in here. and then, But the assistant was like, uh, I told you don't come here. I DM'd you and told you, I told you if you come here, we're going to call the police. Had you arrested or whatever? And I'm like, okay. Now she was about it, about it, okay. And he was leaving, leaving in. But I'm like, whatever. We then see everybody get there. And JoJo was telling everybody what happened between him and Twist. Because, see, like, I still don't know what happened. And Twist is still there. And JoJo's still there. And there's still this tension in the air that you know JoJo's like, because he's still hype. And Twist feel like, you know what I'm saying? He needs to calm down. You know what I'm saying? Because I do this. You know, for real, for real. So he needs to calm down. Jojo, you know what I'm saying? You know, he's he acting gangster. He not gangster. I do this gangster shit. It's what Twist is saying, whatever. And Jojo, like, I just don't get, I don't get what happened. So Jojo then walks up to Twist, like Twist, man, come on, like, like you my brother, man, like what happened? Like we like, bro, like what the, like what the, what, what happened? I walked up to you, and I was talking how I usually talk, and I was, you know, what I'm saying, playing around how I usually do it, whatever. Twist then said, well, no, nah, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know what I'm saying? You was being rude. You know what I'm saying? You was being disrespectful. And Jojo, well, I felt the same way. So they both feel like the other one was disrespectful. But again, you know, Twist is saying, watch how you talk to me. Well I, feel, well, I feel the same way. I'm looking like, we still get no information. And then it goes off. So we look, wait until next week. To see what happens. And next week is the season finale. I don't know how the fuck I stretched it to 30 minutes. But I mean. It is this. And this is what it is. Uh, and if you are still watching. I need you to put in the comment section. Bitty bitty bum ba. Or. Um, just put in some put in some music. Put in, your, put in your favorite lyric. From a song. Okay, and for me, bitty bitty bum ba is mine. Okay, but put in some kind of lyric from a song in the comment section, and that's how I know that you watched me all the way through for thirty goddamn minutes. Okay, and as you know, the 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 fun part of this is that anyone who did not watch to the end will have no idea why are people singing songs in the comment section. Okay, so do it in the way they have no idea what you talking about. Okay, gotta go.